Birds on a beat, by the way. And then you're just gonna reel down your slack and hook set. Bam. There you go. There's one. Bam. Oh, there's one. Oh, God. All right, what's up, guys? It's PD Fishing. We're out here in the morning. About to do a little bit of morning fishing and show you guys the easiest technique in bass fishing. Literally the easiest way to catch bass. But we're at a new pond and, uh, there's a chance we could get kicked out. Here, let me show you all this sign right here where I parked. So, I don't know. We could get kicked out. It'd be good for the video if we got kicked out though. That'd be good content. But um, shout out to the Hunter Fisher for sending me the location to this place. Um, thank you, Hunter, for uh, getting me into this place. But uh, you better come bail me out if I get arrested. All right, guys, so like I said, I'm gonna show you guys the easiest technique in bass fishing. This is the easiest way to go out and catch bass anywhere, wherever you fish, it doesn't matter. So uh, a lot of you guys probably already know what it is. And uh, for you beginners, listen up because this is what you're gonna wanna fish just starting bass fishing and wanting to catch fish. So here we go. All right, so it's gonna look like that, but as you guys know, it's called a Texas rig. If you haven't heard it before, get used to it because you're gonna wanna be throwing it a lot because you're gonna get a lot of bites on it. So I'm gonna cut my line right here. Just to retie, just in case I uh, get on a big one and to not snap off, you know. But um, I'll show you guys what it consists of. Here, let me get all of it. Let me get all my thing, ow, frick. All right, let me get all my things together. Whoa. Yeah. Yeah. Ow. Mm. That probably wasn't a good idea to squeeze the hook in my hand. But uh, that's what it's gonna cons consist of if y'all, yeah, y'all can see it. Is my freaking lens fogging up? Flogging. Is it fogging up again, dude? Yes, it's fogging up again. I just rubbed one of them daggum little towels on it to make it not fog up. Gosh. All right, anyway. So what this technique is going to consist of is uh, wax on, wax off, as you guys saw. How'd y'all like that? Drop that in the comments. Y'all like my little, uh, my little uh, Taekwondo impression? I think it was great. But uh, anyway, so the first thing you're going to do here, let me let, let out enough lines to show y'all. All right, guys, so the first thing with the Texas rig is you're going to grab you one of these. Go to Bass Pro Academy, Dicks, whatever it is, they'll have them. These are called bobber stops. These keep your weight from running up and down the line when you're casting it, when you're reeling it in, or doing whatever you're doing at the bottom of the water with it. It keeps your weight positioned so it's not freaking randomly zooming up the line and stuff. So what you're going to do is grab one of these and... They already have little pre-hole things right there, so you're just gonna, you're gonna run your line right through that little hole. And you're gonna pull, you're gonna pull that little bobber stop up on your line, just like that. Here. It's gonna look just like that. Now your line right here is gonna be a little frayed, so you're just gonna cut that off, just like so. Let's see that. So now that you already have your bobber stop on, you're just gonna slide that sucker up. Now the next thing you're gonna do is grab you a weight, a little bullet weight, just like that. If you guys can see it, yeah, a little bullet weight. My, perf my preferred ounce is to throw three sixteenth ounce. This is all, it's, all, it's just a perfect ounce or perfect weight for me. I always throw it and always catch fish and do good on it, so. It's always worked, so 3 16 ounce, remember that, bullet weight, 3 16 ounce. And you don't have to do this, but I put a little red bead, if y'all can see that. I put a little red bead on mine, that way when the water is darker and the bass have trouble like seeing, 
they can just hear it. Bobber stops. I'll leave enough space for the bobber stops. That way, if that way, when the hook or the when the bullet weight is moving up and down in the water, it's clanking against that red bead. It's making a lot of noise. So even if the fish are in some place that is dark and they can't see, they'll be able to hear it and they'll know where it is. Last thing that, that it consists of is this right here. Obviously a hook, you're gonna want a hook. It looks like it's about a freaking pour. Preferred is the two aught or three aught straight shank hook. For what I'm throwing, I'm throwing like a little speed worm in my worms. So what I like to throw is straight shank with my worms. I just like to throw straight shank straight shank and all so yeah that's what it looks like this is a vmc straight shank three out hook and um uh, also like gamagatsu a lot gamagatsu is a really good one too but um wow i need to hurry up it's about a freaking storm but uh, anyway also the preferred knot that i use is a polymer knot so uh if you guys don't know what a polymer knot is you literally just take your line right here you just double it over like that. Just like that. Grab it. Feed the line through the front side of the eye of it. Just like that. Now you're going to slide it down. And you're just going to do a regular overhand knot. Just like that. So now it's gonna look like that. So you're gonna, you're gonna pull it all the way down. With the extra loop right here, you're gonna pull it over the over the hook and up. Now it's gonna look like that. And then you're just gonna pull the line tight. And that's just gonna cinch that loop all the way down to the knot. So that's how to rig up the easiest technique in bass fishing. And uh, yeah, it's time to go fishing, dude. Show you guys how to freaking catch a fish on this thing, bro. All right. So that's what it should end up looking like right there. That's what it should end up looking like. And I leave my bobber stop up here, like I said, for, so that weight can just do, keep doing that. As I'm bouncing it on the bottom, it's just clanking up against that red bead just in case we're in dirty or nasty water. So, there we go. That's a Texas rig. That's the easiest technique in bass fishing. It takes two minutes to rig up. Also, guys, just in case you guys are wondering, my setup right now, I'm running. This has always been a Texas rig setup. I always dedicate one setup to a Texas rig. I always throw a Texas rig. Like I said, it's the easiest technique in bass fishing. And you can catch a lot of fish on this if you're using the right bait and uh, yeah so what I have right now on it is a metanium DC let me, let me slap my door some more you know it's a metanium DC it's a 7 2 to 1 gear ratio so it's pretty fast and um, yeah it's it's really solid I love I love reels that can fit in my hand really well and it's a really light setup overall so that way I have a lot of power when I hook set and load up that way, none of the fish are going to get off, you know. But, um, yeah, it's a really nice, nice little little uh, reel. It's always worked for me. And the rod I'm running is a Colt Series Dobbins rod. It's the orange. I always just tell by the colors. It's an orange. A little 7 foot, medium, heavy, fast action. It's got a really soft tip. That way I can feel the bite. But it's got a nice backbone. So, they can put up with the fish. And, uh, yeah. Also, the soft tip really helps with loading up and hook setting because the soft tip, soft tip gives you time to reel your slack down and hook set. So, yeah, it's really helpful. And, uh, yeah, let's go ahead and get out there. Let's go catch some freaking fish, dude. I'm so ready. Let's go. I'm going to show you guys how easy this is, how easy this Texas rig technique is. But, uh... Yeah, this, this is dirty water. There's a little bit of stained dirty water out here, so I'm probably going to be using this. This is called a speed worm. It's a worm with a nice little tail right here. And that tail flaps and moves a lot of water. So, really, I'm just running like a, a moving Texas rig. You can run, there's like two types of Texas rigs. A moving Texas rig, like this one, 
or just a straight trick worm or a crawl where you can just bounce it off the bottom and uh, they'll, they'll bite for sure off of that. So I'm gonna pick up my little line trash and uh, yeah, let's get out there. Before we get to the video, this video is sponsored by Carl's Bait and Tackle. And if you guys haven't heard of it, then you need you guys need to go get on it right now. You can save up to 30% off as a member. Um, all huge variety of stuff. Like my the hooks I showed, the hook I showed you today, the beads I showed you today, the bobber stops, and a line, like literally anything. All the th all the stuff I use today you can get on Carl's Bait and Tackle. You get reels, rods, literally everything. There's huge assortments of stuff on Carl's Bait and Tackle, and you can save up to 30% as a member. Also, as a member, you get exclusive sneak peeks to items that are about to drop, whether it's from any company that are, that's coming out with something new, that they, they give you sneak peeks. Speaking of exclusive items with sneak peeks, Guggen Squad has just released a pre-sale for their Back in Black, black, like brand new rods. They're coming out with brand new rods, Back in Black. They're all matte black, they're sick looking. So if you wanna go pre-sale one, go to Carl's right now and get that membership and you can pre-sale one right now. So uh, yeah, that's really cool. Guggen Squad coming out with a new rod. Can't wait to try it once I get my hands on it. It's gonna be sick. So you guys, if you haven't heard of Carl's, go over there and get a membership. You get a bunch of discounts and a super wide variety of stuff uh, that, you can, that you can get. So. All right, y'all. So I'm gonna show you guys how to rig up whatever you're gonna put on your Texas rig. So this is what you're gonna do. So this water is a little dirty. A little brownish green so I'm just running a little June bug color so this is what I'm using a little speed worm so what you're gonna do is you're gonna take the tip of it you're gonna pull it up right where it bends right there at the hook right there where it curves right there you're gonna pull it right there you're gonna pull pull it all the way up just like this pull it all the way up over that knot just like that so it should look like that and now you're gonna pull the worm tight. You're gonna mark your finger, the end of your thumb, where the end of the curve, bend, or the, the bend of the curve, right here. Just like this. See, y'all see that? Right there, right where the curve ends. You stick it right there at the edge of your thumb, pull it through. And then for the weedless action, you're gonna pull pull the worm up. See all see all the tips right here? You're gonna pull the worm up and you're gonna hide that hook from getting caught from the grass and everything. So overall this is what it should look like. Y'all hear that? That's why I put that bead on there. Because of this dirty water. Alright. So when you're throwing a texture rig, make sure your drag is nice and tight so you don't slip on the hook sets. And uh, yeah, let's catch some fish, boys. Let's catch some fish. So what I'm doing with this speed worm is I'm literally just, I'm popping it a couple times to get those, to get that bead rattling. And I'm just steady retrieving at this point. And you'll, you'll when they hit it, you'll feel it. You'll feel it when they hit it. It's nice morning time. They should be, should be looking for some food. Looks like there's, looks like there's some grass on it. Looks like there's some grass out there. Maybe I need to reel a little faster. I don't know. All right, let's cast down the bank down here and see, see if there's any hanging out. y'all let me give you all a little tip if you ever seen any kind of drain like this 
any kind of drain anywhere in any pond you better throw by it because there's most likely it's most likely a fish right there so throw in there most likely they're hiding right there there we go just threw right in there see if there's one uh, hiding out in here because what they're doing right here this drain is they're waiting for little bait to swim by to ambush they're waiting to ambush some bait and uh, you throw your bait right, right along that wall Oof. a lot of grass right there this crap's in most ponds but Oh, there's a bite. Yeah, one's got it. So I'm gonna let him eat it for a little bit and then you're just gonna reel down your slack and hook set. Bam, there you go. It's a small one, but hey, counts, right? Bam. Good catch, is that a bass? Yeah, yes sir. My first one all morning. See, there you go. Well, yeah, we don't have Karens out here. Oh, he's bleeding. Oh, I gotta get him back in the water. I'm, not, I'm gonna have to get in the water. I'm gonna have to get in the water. All right, y'all. Well, that's unfortunate. That's why sometimes you don't let him eat it because they'll, they'll swallow it. Now hopefully he swims away. There he goes. Yeah, he's good. There we go. Tough little guy. See, the little ones are tough. Bigger ones you gotta kinda worry about, but little ones are tough. All right. Now I got some nasty pond doo-doo water on my feet. Nice. All right. Oh, man, it's nasty. It's that muddy stuff. All right, guys, so like I was saying on my GoPro, if you ever see a little sewer spot, spot like this or any kind of running water that goes into sewer, bass love to hang out in places like that, especially when it's hot outside. I'm a, I mean, I live in Florida, and it's blazing like 90, at least 100 degrees every day. So they love to hang out in those little shady spots right there. So make sure you cast right there. Actually, I cast in there, I didn't catch anything, it's funny. And I cast it on that wall part right over there and he came out and got it. So just a little dink, a little one pounder, but that's okay. Like I said, I'm just showing you guys the easiest technique, the easiest way to catch a bass. And uh, yeah, so first bass in the morning, good feeling. There's a whole nother pond on the other side of this bridge. So uh, yeah, we're gonna go over there and uh, see if we can catch some more. Let's do it. No little tip for you guys. If there's ever a fountain system like this one that's right in front of me. Uh oh. I think I have a fish on. I think a fish got it, but I think he ran all the way around the daggum. I think he ran all the way around the daggum fountain.
Oh, there we go. I think I had a bite. I had a bite. Maybe I can throw it back in there and get him. Oh, that's a bite right off the bat. At least it felt like it. There's one. Bam. That's the one that was freaking messing with me, bro. That was the fountain fish. That's the one that got me freaking hooked up with the daggum. That's what that's the uh, that's him right there. That's that little freaking that's it's a dink, but it's a bass. I don't care. That's that little freaking troublemaker that was trying to get me stuck in the fountain. Man. That's that little daggum troublemaker. Well, just realized I didn't have my mics on for that last little bit, so uh, just going to explain it. I was just saying, that's that little piece of crap that kept getting me hung up in them cores over there by the fountain. And I was just saying, if you ever if you ever buy a fountain, make sure you fish it. It's an oxygenator. It's a bubbler for the fish. It, it's really good circulation for the fish, but be careful because you can also get wrapped up in the cores and break off. So, yeah, it's basically all I was saying, and then I flipped them in the water. Yeah. All right. Number two, let's keep going. All right, y'all. So I've been fishing for a while. It's been really tough. And I've caught in two fish before. But I promise, if you go, to, you go to any lake, any pond, and there's bass in it, the Texas rig is the way to go. And I forgot to tell you guys, um, I, on Texas rig, I usually use around 15 to 17 pound fluorocarbon. And uh, yeah, but uh, I've gotten a little bored and I'm, I can't catch any more fish, so I'm just going to show you guys some uh, some of my best hook setting positions that uh, that I got to mine. So uh, yeah, hope you guys like it and I hope you guys enjoy. So let's show you guys the best hook setting positions you could ever you could ever ask for. All right, you ready? Let's go. So this is how easy using a Texas rig is. All these positions will work. Doesn't matter what it is, doesn't matter how big the fish is, I don't care. Doesn't matter. So, yeah, let's get right into it. All right, here we go. Position number one, sitting down. Oh, oh, my friend. Position number two, standing up. Oh, God, free, free willy, free willy, giant. Position number three, behind the back. Ow, freak. Position number three, right to left. Oh, yes, sir. Giant, giant. Position number four, left to right. Oh, son, son. Position number five, stop, drop, and roll. Oh, there's one. Oh, God, freedom, freedom. Position number six, backwards. Oh, yes, sir. That's a, that's a pig. That's a pig. Oh, it's piggy. Piggy. Oh, piggy. All right, guys. We're in the truck with the air cranked up. It's so hot here in Florida. Ugh. But uh, anyways, yeah, overall, I caught two fish today. They were dinks. But, I mean, like I said, the Texas rig, most versatile, one of the most versatile baits or ways you can fish for bass. 
it's super easy it takes five minutes to tie up and it's I mean anything that represents you can put a crawl on there you can put a lizard on there anything that they'll, I mean they'll eat anything so for you beginners I really suggest trying the Texas rig it's really it's a really fun way of fishing too you, you get to feel the bites of the fish the feel you get to, you get to feel the fish tugging on your line it's awesome and then you get to hook set the hook set's the most anticipated part because you just get to swing into that thing also I hope you guys enjoyed that little bit of me showing you guys some uh, techniques of hook setting so yeah came up came up with it on my own and I think I think they're really good so you guys should try them out yeah thank you guys for watching this video we're on the road to 2,000 subscribers I'm at 50 I'm almost at 1500 we're super close to 1500 so you guys have been going crazy thank you guys so much for y'all support and everything y'all do f for the channel and uh, make sure you hit that subscribe button and make sure you hit that bell notification button so you get notified of when I upload also make sure you hit up our Instagram follow us on Instagram we're doing a giveaway for 2,000 subscribers for SLX DC so do all that to get you entered to win and once we get to 1,000 subscribers, give away the SLX DC. So uh, yeah, thank you guys for watching this video. And uh, as always, till next time, keep slapping.